Hey, welcome everybody to the Optum Ideation Podcast. We have a fantastic guest today, Mr. Yasir Hashmi. And uh, he's really doing a lot of great things for uh, startups, entrepreneurs, business people looking to uh, find a partner in, uh, in capital. So uh, if we would, let's uh, welcome him to the show. And uh, we're going to get right into some questions with them. And uh, what's your story, your resume, and how did you get to here? Perfect. Thank you so much for having me, Tim. Highly appreciate that. So, yeah, in terms of my story, it's a long story because my entrepreneurship journey started when I was basically 12. But it's like I started basically, you know, selling stuff in school so that that, that sales mindset was uh, basically, you know, from childhood, but it was like, you know, when I was in fifth grade, I realized my purpose in life. I thought about different things and that were related to my community. So from that age, I was focused on my purpose. Now, then, then I realized that in order to fulfill my purpose, I need money to do that. Right. So from that age, I focus and I know basically, you know, the best way to make most amount of money was business. So then I went into business from the age basically from that specific age when I was in fifth grade and then basically you know I kept on doing it basically you know I, I, I used to sell stuff in my school days and then later basically you know after basically selling different kinds of things and in later 2019 I was reading an article of Forbes which was telling that you know around two billion people will lose their jobs because of the fourth industrial revolution that's coming so I realized that, you know, basically more and more people will become unemployed at the time. And it's like because machines will replace it, artificial intelligence will replace it. And, you know, basically the startups are the thing which are basically you know, creating that revolution. And there will be more entrepreneurs than there will be more than, than their employees. So that will be the situation in the future. So then I realized what's the biggest problem with the startups and the biggest problem with the startups what was funding. That's the biggest problem because it's a right. backbone of growing a business. Like you can grow a business to a certain extent, bootstrap without raising any external capital, but you can't make an Apple bootstrap. Okay, right. you need external investments. So that's why I focus yeah. into this industry, into the investment banking industry. So our model is a bit different. It's a part of you know the mainstream investment banking that's more focused on investor marketing and capital introductions, where we are connecting the startups that are fundraising with thousands of funds which we have in our network and angel investors, high net worth individuals, family offices. We are connecting these people so that, you know, we can facilitate investments according to the investment thesis of the fund. And also the startups can also get the investments which they're looking for. But at the same time, it's so hard for startups to raise funds because of a lot of lack of awareness in different areas. And basically, there's a lot of factors. There's no one thing. There's no one reason for any kind of know which people get in life there's always a lot of reason whether in sales one reason never leads to no even in sales so that's the thing so for me my life basically how i live my life my life's philosophy of more is more philosophical in terms of how i have structured my life so according to me a person should be crystal clear on their life's purpose so purpose is like something which is greater than you so you purpose is something where you are willing to do that thing without being paid for it Let's say if I'll tell you, Tim, what you will do if someone will kidnap your family, you'll be like, you'll do everything to get them back, right? The reason is basically you love your family and that's something in which you believe from your heart and you'll have the drive to figure it out. You don't need a manual or a mentor or a book to figure it out how to get your family back. You'll just have to drive. So same is with life. When you really bond and believe in something and you want something, you know, from your heart, from the bottom of your heart, you badly want that thing, you'll just have the drive. You won't need a manual or a mentor or someone to push you, do this, do this. You'll have that drive, natural drive. But of course, a mentor will help you, a book will help you, but still, it's very important to be crystal clear on your life's purpose because there's a marginal utility, right? You also know it. After making a certain amount of money, all your needs are fulfilled. And it's like, you know, you don't get so much pleasure just by making, you know, another basically, you know, another million dollars, like if you have a certain, like what you can do with $10 million is almost what you can do with $100 million. So there's no marginal utility. All your needs are fulfilled, except if you want to buy a jet or if you want to buy a ship. And you, I mean, you know, you can rent it. Okay, why you have to buy that thing unless you are able to properly get, you know, proper returns on that. So for me, I think a person should be crystal clear on their life's purpose. Then they should set their long-term, intermediate and short-term goals and all three goals should be aligned with the life purpose of that person. 
And the other thing about these goals is these goals should be in all dimension of life because everything is in correlation, mentally, socially, spiritually, physically, financially, because everything is in correlation. Right. So those things should be crystal clear on their life's purpose. Then they should set their long-term goals. And it's like, you know, long-term goal could be like a five to 10 year goal. A lot of people I've seen, they are like, they set a long-term goal for 40 years. You can't predict 40 years, okay? And things change. Your goals is of course change, but 40 is too much. Five to 10 years for a long-term goal is okay. That's understood. Because the other thing is this, one of the other thing is this basically Tim, you can determine how successful someone is on the basis of the time horizons they talk in. If someone is saying, I'm going to do this great thing in one week or one day, of course, basically they haven't already done great things because they don't know it takes time to create value, to generate value. And the most successful person you will talk to, they'll always talk to you in horizons of different years or five years or 10 years or 20 years or 40 years. Like Warren Buffett has been in the same industry for 70 years. Yeah. And he is one of the richest person in the world, right? And he is the greatest investor of the century. So it's like, you know, we, we, it, it's like first, you know, basically you should be crystal clear on your life's purpose. Then you should set your long-term goals in all dimensions of life. A long-term goal, you know, basically could be, a goal in the next and let's say a long-term goal in physical dimension of life could be like that you know i want in the next 10 years i want to be in a situation where i'm able to run a five mile marathon i want to be in a situation where i don't have any problem with my you know bones in terms of flexibility or uh, it's like i have enough i have six pack abs in the next 10 years that's a long-term goal in physical dimension a spiritual long-term goal could be like in the next 10 years i want to be able to get good at this I, don't, I want to be able to memorize this religious book or I need to know the meaning of everything in this religious book or I need to know all the things about different religion. I need to know how to increase my consciousness, how to become spiritually richer. And a long-term goal in the mental dimension could be like in the next 10 years, I need to have you know cog amazing cognitive skills, problem-solving skills, judgmental skills, interpersonal skills, intrapersonal skills in the next 10 years. And on a 10 to 10 level, not like you know 5 out of 10 level. I mean, being master in those skills, okay? the skill of fundraising, the skill of sales or marketing or branding, how to do those things in the next 10 years. That's my goal. So that's one, basically one of the basically, you know, way how people can set long-term goal in mental dimension. Then it's social goal in, in long-term. It could be like in the next 10 years, I need to be able to have a network of 100 chartered accountants, CPAs, 100 CFAs, 100 lawyers, 100 politicians, 100 influencers, 100 basically, you know, celebrities, 100 influencers or 100 YouTubers. So it could be like, it could be anything, right? And then in the next 10 years, I need to be able to have amazing communication skills. I need to be able to read body language of any person I talk to, the tone, what does the tone mean? What does this mean if someone is getting bored? What does this mean? And even, you know, non-verbal communication, 70% of communication is done non-verbally. And it's like, even the way someone basically shakes your hand, you can determine if that person thinks of themselves as superior than you or inferior than you, or if it's an equally respect handshake. So it's, it's, but it's valuable skill, right? And in a long term, that could be a goal people can put. A financial goal could be like in the next 10 years, I want to have a certain net worth. It could be whatever because it's always always about purpose. I'm not saying if I'm a billionaire or I have a net worth of 100 million, I'm not telling the other person that do that what I did. It's like do what, what gives you meaning and fulfillment in life because your purpose is something which gives you meaning in life. And at the end, meaning matters. Like you don't want to do something which costs you a peace of mind. Because it's like, you know, it is always a marginal utility and, you know, it's like, you know, it, it, whether you make $1 million or a 100 million, you can do almost, you know, the same things with the money, basically, you know, which you will basically make because there's always a marginal utility. So that's how people can set their long-term goals and intermediate goal could be five-year goal. And then most important are short-term goals because that's your day-to-day -day action. So a short-term goal could be like in physical dimension that, you know, I should make a habit of taking five minutes of walk after dinner. I should make a habit of doing 10 minutes of walk every morning. I should create a habit of doing 20 minutes of gym. I should basically, you know, run for basically 20 minutes on a treadmill. That could be a physical goal. A mental goal could be like, I, I mean, if, if not reading a book to learn a skill, you can just, you know, read blinks, like, you know, summaries which you can read. Or it could be like, if I want to learn leadership skills, I'm going on Amazon or using chat GPT to know what are the best 10 books in the world for leadership skills. Then you go on Amazon, check them, best reviews. Okay, you download the PDF, you just do it. If people can't say that, you know, I don't have the money to do this thing. Okay, everything is free. Information is free, right? But it's like, it's about you who is not clear because 
the people who don't have a plan fits into someone else's plan. And guess what someone else might have planned for you? Not much. So, of course, you need to have a plan for yourself always in life. So, that's how you can say it basically, you know, a mental goal, a social goal could be like, you have LinkedIn, like one of the best apps in the world. You go on LinkedIn, you connect with different people. Let's connect with 100 influencers, 100 YouTubers. Of course, you know, see, a lot of times people are like, what value I can provide to this person? See, it's like two things which you can provide to anyone is your connections and your advice. People always take connection, basically, you know, people don't have any problem. But at the same time, like, but if you want to network with someone who's a billionaire or someone who has a net worth of $500 million, so you can't do anything to them to increase their status. Okay, because they already have all the money, right? And they don't need anything from you. But at the same time, in order to network with those people, you should try to talk or, you know, basically give them or basically, you know, talk in a way where you are more talking about the things which are very personal to them and which is not a publicly available data. Like, if you are a billionaire, I won't talk about, you know, I, I know someone who can get you at a show and you can be famous. So you would be like, I can buy the show, right? So you don't want to be like that. It's like, I can, what I can do is I can tell you that, hey, Tim, I know one of your friends who mentioned, I went to your school teacher in high school. Her name is this. And she said that you, here is one of your book, basically, which homework, which you did on one of your book, which was there in the cupboard in the school, basically in the high school. So that's one, that's a lot more meaningful for you rather than me trying to say, trying to, you know, become a big shot in front of a billionaire and saying, I can help you in this. They'll be like, I can buy that thing, right? So that's not, that's something which pisses people off. So yeah. it's very, and people are very sensitive for different reasons. It's like, you know, people, you, you don't know what, what, why people are sensitive for. So it's like, that's how you can structure your life. And that's how I have structured my life. Like I have my purpose, I have my long-term goals, my short-term goals, and everything is aligned. Everything is in correlation because everything affects everything. <clears throat> and that's, so that's, that's what I really liked life. about you when I met you was like, you have the same kind of networking respects that I do. And, you know, you're not trying to, you know, hey, I've got this going. You're just, you're trying to help people. And that's right. ultimately what I'm trying to do, especially with right. things like the show is right. that's my goal is how many people can I help? Because people sure. are in a bad spot right now. For sure. And so, you know, how can we do things to help people? All these For points sure. that you have here, these lessons yeah. that you've learned probably the hard way and you're sharing them. And so like, these are the things that, you know, no matter how much money someone has or whatever they have, in business or in life, these yeah. lessons that you're sharing are things that apply to all levels and people on right. all levels can respect that and grow from that or, you yeah. know, or, or understand it fully. Right. Yeah, for sure. Definitely. And also the other thing is this, it's like what you're doing. I've seen all your content. Basically it's, it's a, not, I should not say all the content, but I've seen a lot of your videos and I think what you, I mean, you provide a lot of great free value. And the thing is, I also started my channel. The reason was this, like when I started, I didn't have anyone who could guide me or mentor me to do things right. which I wanted to do. Someone who can give me a direction. So yeah. for me, basically as a way to give back to the world, I've created basically my channel. Basically we have basically, you know, it's growing very fast, our channel. Yeah. And I'm posting on all the social media platforms, which are out yeah. there, the major ones. And I post content daily, different pieces of content. And my focus is on providing pro precise crocs information rather than, so much story because one thing Tim says like people say that in public speaking you have to be a good storyteller okay great but it's like I hate stories because you read this much you learn this much but of course basically it, it also depends on what stage your person is at see it's like if you are someone who right. has read hundreds of books you will it will be super hard for you to learn one thing new in a book because yeah. you've already read so many things and most of the things are same in most books so it's like it's like the more saturated you are with information, the harder it becomes for you to learn new things. So that's the other thing. But at the same time, if someone is in the early stages of life, of course, it's very important to learn from the best to be the best. So that, And also it's important from who you are learning from because a lot of times I've seen books which has 200 or 300 pages and those books are like, I'm like, I've read the book and I'm like, this thing which I learned from this book could have been written in one page. And it yeah. just wasted all the time. So it's like, so that's why, like, I, I launched my book, Lessons from a Millionaire. It's super amazing. It's based, on, it's based on personal development and entrepreneurship. It has more than 300 precise teachings on my life journey, basically, you know, in terms of business. And it has more than 300, basically, precise points. And it has gotten amazing endorsement by CEOs of multi-billion dollar companies and also 
you know, many people who have a net worth of more than hundreds of millions of dollars and also people who are running different pension funds. So it's like in my network. So this book basically is recently released and it's there basically on a website. Anyone who is watching can go on the website, yasinhashmi.com. And I guarantee you, for me, it's one of the, it's almost the best book I have read on personal development and entrepreneurship because very it's just very precise information, very contextual, everything in the inside. Like one of the person who, who basically reviewed my book, one of my mentors, his name is Ross Youngs. And uh, basically, you know, he is CEO of a company called UniVenture and he is also the in Inc. Magazine Hall of Fame. And he mentioned that in this book, it's so hard to basically, you know, create top 10 points because every everything is there inside. Everything is in the form of a quote. Like there's a line written and then the explanation is there. So that's an insight and then the explanation is written. And those things, you know, are not written in a way like I'm, I'm like a proper person. I'm writing everything, thinking and writing. It's like... Over the period of time, daily almost I learn one new thing. I write it in my phone notes and then basically, you know, those notes were taken and then it created in the form of a book. I also use chat GPT to create this book. And it, it's really very helpful basically to elaborate different things, to explain different things. But, I mean, it's it's a great book. You can go on our website, yasirhashmi.com. There's a book section. You can see the book. And if you don't get value, I'll happily refund you for the book if you, if you don't think you don't you didn't get enough value. So basically, you know, that's how I think that people should structure their life. And what you are doing is great. I think it's incredible what you're doing. And my goal is same. And yeah. for my audience, like, you know, we also have, we'll try to have the same podcast, basically, you know, posted on our channel as well. And we can cross share our audience. Like this is collaboration, right? The goal is not to become each other's competitor. The goal is to collaborate and help each other grow their channel. So basically, you know, that's what my goal here is. Basically, you know, to provide as much value to your audience and to basically, you know, get people to know about the great things which you are doing at your channel. Yeah. Yeah. So, you know, a lot of layers that you, we talked about, you know, you were moving to get here. So let's talk about, you know, what's the next layer that, that you want to remove? So, so what, one of the things basically it's like, I have divided my life in basically different horizons, like for the, for my whole life, I focused on to be basically almost in financial industry, but at the age of 50, I targeted to move into the educational industry. And then at the age of 60, I'll run for Indian basically prime minister election in India. You know, prime minister is like the president of US. So it's like I, I plan to run an election, but for the next 30 years, I plan to be in the venture capital industry. And at the same time, you know, to convert it into my family office, which will more of like act as a private equity fund to buy other companies. And at the same time, I'll be involved in venture capital. Like I'm a venture capital fund and I plan to launch different venture capital fund. This one is for 15 million. Another one I plan for 150 million. Another one for basically 500 million. In that way, I've structured basically, you know, doing two venture capital, launching two venture capital fund every 10 years. So that's how I've structured and that's how, that's the right vehicle for me to become a billion. The, the, the reason is basically, see, it's like in my company, the Hashmi Group team, we help people in fundraising. So I was like, you know, if I can help others in fundraising, why should I not raise my own fund? Okay. Yeah. So then I focused on raising my fund. And it's like, you know, see, it's like the thing is, people say that we need more businesses to help the economy grow. We also need more VC funds as well to help the economy grow. And it's like, like I mentioned about my purpose and my purpose basically, you know, was to do certain things on my community. And for that, I need to be a billionaire. And in my company in investment banking, it's very hard to become a billionaire. And it's like in life, it's not how hard you row, it's which boat you row. It's about the right opportunity, being in the right opportunity, right? So it's a very high leverage opportunity. Like in my basically, you know, in my investment bank, I know I can never become a billionaire in investment banking, but I know I can be a billionaire in venture capital in the next 30 years. And most likely, basically, you know, or less than that. So it's like, you know, so that's how I shifted my focus and focus on asset management and venture capital and then focus on basically launching my family office to acquire other companies, other businesses, small businesses. So it's like, and then, you know, reconfixing them and then, you know, increasing the valuation, then selling them. So that's the right vehicle, which can make me a billionaire. So it's very important, you know, basically to be the right vehicle because it's not about, you know, the people always remember them, the people who grow fast in life are using the highest leverage in life. And leverage is like, you know, is the ratio between inputs and outputs. The bigger the output and the, with the least input, the better the form of leverage they are using. Like there are four forms of leverage. Any business owner that's watching, they can apply in their life as well. It's very amazing. So th this thing, this I learned from the CEO of AngelList. 
The kids are amazing. He's an amazing guy as well. So it's like there are four forms of leverages. So the most oldest form of leverage is labor. Okay. So like in ancient Egypt, you know, the king Tutankhamun, he used millions of basically labors, efforts, time, resources to build the pyramids. Okay. And he got the credit, right? But millions of people built it from their time, from the energy, right? So he leveraged other people's time to build the pyramid. So that's the most ancient form of leverage. That's labor. And then the other modern form of leverage was capital. Like I'm using other investors' money, their life's resources to grow the fund, basically. And, you know, I mean, I have invested my money as well. But it's like, for me, the return is infinite because I'm investing my time. So it's like I'm using their life efforts to make that money and they're investing with me and I'm... I'm getting 20% profits on that. So that's basically, you know, another form of leverage that's capital. Like Steve Schwarzman, he's, his net worth is like between 30 to 40 billion. He's the CEO of Blackstone that manages a trillion dollars. It's a private, largest private equity fund in the world. So he's using another form of leverage. That's also older form of leverage. Now the two most modern form of leverage, one is media, another one is coding. So the thing about media is like Kali Jana became a billionaire at the age of 20 to 21. And it's like, it's like she did it, and the same thing which Kylie Jenner did was also done by Maybelline with thousands of employees with centuries of track record just because she has a better form of leverage. She has hundreds of millions of Instagram followers which bought this stuff from her. So she used a modern form of leverage. That's the thing about what Kylie Jenner did, and that's why she became a billionaire. She used a better form of leverage because she posted something, it could be seen by millions of people, hundreds of millions of people, right? And she was able to leverage her credibility, her, her basically, you know, whatever you can say. So it's like she basically, you know, Kylie Jenner, she leveraged herself to sell something to millions of people at no incremental cost to her. Like the storage of all her posts, all this stuff which she's creating, all these hundreds of millions of people. She hasn't created Instagram, right? She's just a person on Instagram. So she's using Instagram's effort to create return for herself. Okay, so that's how she was able to do it. So that's an example of basically media. And then basically it could be like, let's say you have a YouTube channel with hundreds of millions of followers. So the thing about YouTube channel with millions of followers or whatever number of followers is like, you have, a dist you have eyeballs which are constantly seeing you. So you can sell or show millions of things to millions of people, millions of time in any corner of the world. Yeah. So that's a very amazing form of leverage. So at no incremental cost to you, like, like we are recording this and you know, People who are watch if one person watches it, basically, you know, effort is same. Or if a hundred million people watches it, it's a, it's a, it's the same effort, right? But exactly. we'll get more benefit if hundred million people will basically watch it and we'll be able to impact and help more people, right? So that's the another form of leverage. That's media. And then you have coding. So coding is like the thing about coding, uh, the most amazing thing about coding is the the incremental cost to serve one customer or a hundred million customers is almost the same yeah like if you created a course you create it on a well, it's on your website people go one person can go and buy the same course hundred million people can go and buy the same course but of course you know when you have hundred million people you can just increase the hosting or hosting storage of your website and you just need people on a customer support but that's a small a small investment right but it's like you can have hundreds of millions of people who are buying the same thing at zero incremental cost almost but at the other end, if you're using an older form of leverage, which is like labor, where you have, let's say, you need to hire one person in order to serve 10 clients. This means if your business is growing, you need to hire and pay another person to manage another 10 clients, another one person to manage another 10 clients. So it's hard to grow that business. That's why software businesses, SaaS, software as a service businesses have very high valuation. So that's one great advantage, which is there basically, you know, in these types of businesses, basically software driven businesses because they are using a very high form of leverage. But at the same time, you could be using a very old form of leverage at a very higher level. Yeah. On a one to 10 scale, you are using it. You are using capital on 10 to 10 level. You can destroy all other form of leverages. Like Steve Schwarzman votes 40 billion. Okay. Kylie Jenner and you know, Kim Kardashian has more than 300 million followers, but they are not richer than Steve Schwarzman. And so he's using, you know, the thing about Steve Schwarzman, I was listening to one of his interview. He mentioned it was several years ago. He mentioned that he used to print his emails and one person used to bring those emails in a printed sheet. So, and he worth $40 billion, right? And this guy, Steve Schwarzman, he raised a billion dollar fund without any track record in asset management. His first time fund was a billion dollar fund. How amazing is that? He mentioned that he had his partner, Pete, 
and he mentioned that you know he talked to his partner he meant, partner mentioned that you know no one will ever give us 101 million dollars to manage for a first time fund without any experience he mentioned that you know if we'll talk about 10 million then it will be hard to get bigger investors which were in their network to you know get those people to come in and it's like so and the other thing about a bigger fund is when something is big the small investors don't have any problem in investing 10 million or 100 million but it's like if a fund is like a 10 million dollar fund people are like if i'm investing 10 million 1 million i'm investing a, I, I have 10 percent stake of something so if this thing goes away if this thing crashes i'm i'm losing all my money because it's a small thing right but if it's a big billion dollar thing then it's like there's so big higher level of diversification yeah. so you know that's a different situation so he, he one great thing he mentioned in his book was this that he mentioned that the the pain and the torture and the trauma which a person face in a small business is if not more almost same as it is in a big business so always focus on a big opportunity and you know the thing about thinking big is this tim when you think big see the reason first first of all it's about why people think small the reason people think small is people think that how they can get something done on the basis of the limited resources which they have that's why people think small and the re and the, when you think big you think about other people okay what i need is what other people have you think in a different way when you think big you are like okay i need to do this big thing now i don't have enough experience i don't have enough resources financial resources i don't have enough knowledge i don't have enough connections so okay now i got it that what i need is what other people have so i'm leveraging their efforts their reputation their credibility to get something done for all because yeah it has to be win-win because if something is not win-win it's not sustainable you can't do that for very long and yeah. if you can't do something for very long you can't make big money you'll make small money so always focus on making big money the big money can only be made in long term like the people who choose money over relationship are the people who neither gets the relationship neither gets the money now gets yeah. the money in, in long term so it's very important to you know think from that perspective in this regard then. And also it's like, you know, in terms of, in terms of, you know, thinking big or like the first point, which I mentioned in regards to purpose, having a crystal clear purpose, see when you are crystal clear on your purpose, when you set your goals, all the goals are written. Now you have to think what you need is what other people have and what controls other people is the unconscious mind. So 90% of human decisions are taken by unconscious mind. So if you can master the psychology of the unconscious mind, you can get anything you want in life. If you know how to really use the subconscious mind, that's how it is. Like most people don't do it. Most people don't want to study. Like if this thing I can guarantee, like if someone can, you know, put the, you know, whatever it takes. So let's say if someone will, let's say, you know, study for two years, these four subjects, they can easily become a millionaire. Okay. One is negotiation. One is sales. One is basically psychology, cognitive psychology. And then basically, you know, it's like persuasion. So if people can learn these four things, they can get whatever they want most of the time in life. I should I should say, and of course, it's also it also depends on you know a lot of factors because one factor is like if someone don't has access to these things or someone is so extreme you know in so extreme poverty, that's why. But you know most of the time, like most people have access to phones or YouTube, and you know all these things can be learned on YouTube or there's a lot of free content on internet. So, I mean, these things can be learned. And if, but, but see, at the end, it's always about most people are lazy or most people don't like to feel stupid when they got to know something new. Yeah. Like, we feel stupid it's when we get ego. to know something Yeah, it's an ego right. thing, right? Right, right. Like, like the, the thing about, do, do, do you know about Sigmund Freud? Yeah. Yeah, so Sigmund Freud, basically, he has this basically psychoanalysis theory where he mentioned about e ego, super ego, where he mentioned about different factors of the human brain and human beings do everything because of two reasons. One is desire to be important and second is sexual desire. At the yeah. core of everything, these are the two reasons. So people don't feel important when they feel stupid, when they get to do something new. So that's the thing about people. So basically, you know, that's why I mentioned in the end, it's always about how badly you want something. And also the other thing is this, there's no one thing which can make you successful. You need a combination of things. Like I have seen so many people asking what one thing you think that, you know, it can make someone successful. There's no one thing. You need a combination of things. But at the same time, it seems like like attracts like. If you, if you develop a good habit, 
you also attract many other good habits along with that habit. So it's like an infection. Same goes for negativity. Yeah, it's uh, it's energy. We're all here in this right. this uh, plane, this planet, and uh, and we have energy. Everything is connected. We're all part of this yeah. big machine, and yeah. there's an energy that that it's it's all. If you are in a negative energy, yeah. then your world will become negative. If you're in a positive energy, then yeah. everything you know you'll come into connection with. Yeah more positive people and and these things will happen for you and it's, right. it's such a difficult thing to comprehend because we're so used to seeing the physical uh realm that we exist in people right. don't think about the spiritual side of things right and also the other thing is this tim most i i, I really believe this that the most important things in the world are unseen yeah you can't see them yeah exactly i love it now, uh, what uh, what practices or techniques uh, make your day a success? And I say that knowing that, didn't you do a fast here recently? Yeah, right. So basically, I also basically did fast. It was Ramazan. And in Ramazan, we have to keep our fast for like 15 to 16 hours for 30 days straight. That's there to improve our self-discipline. Yeah. And to improve our basically patients. And, you know, the thing is, and also doctor scientists also proved it that, you know, in order to have a very good health, basically, and to live longer, you should at least spend one month of fast. Because when you keep fast, a lot of the, you know, bad, basically, you know, bacteria in your body are digested by your body. And then basically, you know, your stomach gets more clearer on the intestine. So there's some basically, you know, scientific reason as well. So that's one other thing. But it's like for my day... I mean, you know, a lot of the, it's like I don't have a very fixed schedule in terms of exactly doing things. All the things like, I mean, in a lot of things, I'm, I'm doing things in a very fixed manner, like going to gym at 3 p.m. I go to gym at 3 p.m. Then basically I go on a walk with my spouse at like 7 p.m. And then basically, you know, in, in terms of, you know, my day, it's just work, different kinds of work, just different basically things which I'm involved in. And, you know, the other thing is this, I shifted my focus from income generation to wealth management because since like when 10% of a person's wealth is almost equal to the annual income, then your focus should be shifted on wealth management and, you know, income generation because your wealth is outpacing your income generating capacity so now my focus is basically on basically wealth management on real estate i'm doing some constructions as well basically you know to diversify my wealth in real estate as well so basically you know basically different things i'm doing and uh, it's not like this something fixed but it's like on weekends i have fixed schedule that i have to do these certain things and basically I, I, I read certain religious texts. I read yeah. certain books. Basically, I, I try to read some ways because most of the books I read, I already know most of the things. So yeah. I just focus on some ways because I get, I try to, so, and yeah, I, I, try, I listen to podcasts. That. Let's get yeah, into that a little bit because I want, you know, I'd like to get your take on like Ayurvedic uh, herbs. You know, are you into any of that? Like medicines? Hopes. Yeah. Yeah. So basically, it's like, you know, in terms of hopes. I really find them very useful because they don't have any side effect as compared to allopathic medicines, but yeah. I really love it. And you know, the other thing, where I live, just beside where I live, there's the almost it's among top 10 Yodani, which is herbal universities in India. Yeah. And this university is not number one university all over in India in pharmacy. So basically yeah. it's a great university here where I live, basically it's just near my home. And, uh, you know, in terms of herbs, I really believe in them. Yeah. And so do you have like uh, key ones that maybe a lot of people don't know about that you sure, sure. respect? Yeah. Yeah. So, so one is neem and the other one is tulsi. So neem and tulsi are very good. I mean, like when India was basically, when in, during the colonial era in India, the Britishers, when they came, they took a lot of neem and tulsi from India. Neem and tulsi trees from India and a lot of, and they planted the seeds basically in, in Britain. And it's, it's amazing. Like this tree has so many benefits. Like first thing, I mean, whatever problem you have, you can just keep it. Like even if the fruits, I mean, they have a fruit basically and it's very bitter, bitter in taste. So it's like, you can keep that basically, you know, 
yeah, that, that fruit and clothes and, and clothes which you are basically you know putting in an almira it it will never get any kind of fungus any kind of basically you know any any kind of this insect will never come near to it so there are a lot of benefits basically to it you can create basically you know you, you can eat them directly you can put them in your tea it it, it tastes amazing like i use tulsi in tea basically sometimes yeah. it's really very tasty yeah. when you eat it and it's also very basically you know healthy for your it's very good for your health it's like it's also very religious like yeah. in certain religions in india it's respected so much like people yeah. basically pray these basically plants in certain religions yeah so what about text so you know like mahabharata or like what what do you what have you studied that maybe a lot of other people have not sure sure so basically i mean see my religion for my religion in islam i have read the quran and i have read the hadith hadith are the things that are happened basically in the life of the prophet which are accurate okay and i have also read torah which is the religious books of jews judaism and i have also read bible and old testament i've read and i have also read basically gita which is the religious book of largest majority religion in india hinduism i have read basically bible you know it right i was i was also reading one book of prophet zoroastra of which is the which is for the religion of zoroastrianism yeah. so i read basically in you know, a lot of books and all i mentioned this gives a different perspective in order to you know, understand different things because a lot of things in one religion india is also similar to other the religion and most of the things like in terms of christianity islam and jews basically you know the history is same like yeah. it's just a continue continuation of different religions like you know tell Pro- prophet Muhammad was the last prophet before that basically you know it was prophet moses basically who was jews follow and then basically you know before for christians it was like prophet isa who we call jesus in english and then basically first man was adam who we call adam in basically arabic so yeah. that's how basically it's the same story now do you believe that these names and these uh, stories are more of a symbolism uh to other meanings uh so let's say like christ is that uh you know uh, this consciousness this christ consciousness is this something that we're all able to obtain or you believe it was like a physical being um so i i don't know if i got your question exactly but it's yeah. like i really believe in everything basically in my religion and i try yeah. to live my life according to my religion because yeah. see it's wisdom okay and the thing about wisdom is see it takes one to do one right you have to be wise enough in order to understand what's wise and it's like you have to be valuable enough to understand what's valuable so basically you know i see things from a business perspective so i'm more of like someone who's very analytical and logical in all the things that i do but at the same time i have learned a lot of scientific benefits of different things in my religion and a lot of things that are proven by cyber scientists now and which are already proven in the past basically in these religious texts which were written thousands of years ago like one of the thing basically was in surah nu which was surah nu i guess basically which mentioned about internal waves like in one surah of the quran it's mentioned that there are internal waves like around i guess one mile inside the sea this darkness which is also mentioned in the quran surah that basically waves above which are waves above which is dark, are basically under which are darkness so there's also thing mentioned about the internal waves also in the quran and then basically there's another thing about one another religious text in quran where it mentioned it basically tells about that we created mountains and then we created and, and we gave them stakes so mountains are their tectonic plates mountains when they're up they are also their tectonic plates which is inside and mountains are deep inside as well so scientists got to know about these things later but it was already there mentioned in the religious book so these are all of things basically you know are very interesting like i have also written a history book i have written a history book and i wrote that history book basically several years ago i guess four five years ago and that book mentioned the history of ancient and medieval india yeah. so it's like my background was coming from history but it was i, I was involved in so many things so yeah. it's like I, I, that's why i have a very multi dimensional perspective on different yeah, things because me too so i i i have like i i can tell that about almost every topic i have a knowledge of 3 on a 10 scale but for the things that i know i am like 9 out of 10 because there's yeah. always a way to be better so yeah so that's you know where you're at you know physically located do you go to yeah. temples and things like this do you observe the frequencies yeah. and vibrations of these yeah. of these temples 
So it's like basically, actually temples are used by Hindus, which is another religion in India. My religion is different. It's Islam. So yeah, in Islam, basically we go to mosque. I yeah. often go to mosque. I, I pray all the five prayers. Basically, sometimes it's hard to you know pray the earlier morning prayer, which is at like 5 a.m., which is just just basically before the basically you know when the sunrise, and then after you have basically one another one, which is at around 1 p.m. to 2 p.m. and then there's another prayer at 4 p.m. five basically 5 6 p.m. and then there's another which is around 7 p.m. and then there's another which is about 9 p.m. or 9:20 p.m. Like currently, it's like 9.44 p.m. here in India. I'm yeah. currently in New Delhi in South Delhi. Yeah. So, you know, since you pr your prayers align with the, with the sun, do you, have you ever done any kind of sun gazing? Do you believe that that's a, a positive effect on, on the body? Sun I mean, gazing? No, I haven't done it, basically. Yeah, I do. But okay. uh, apparently it affects your pineal gland and it just kind of busts it open. Now... Are you okay. into that type of thing? Uh, no, I'm not, basically. Yeah. So apparently, you know, we have a third eye, right? Uh, you've had to come across this. Yeah, I, yeah, I know. Basically, yeah. a third eye. Yeah. Basically, I did, I did a research on different secret societies and third eye and all these consciousness and sixth sense for yeah. several years. So basically, yeah. you know, I, I basically am aware about basically, you know, the third yeah. eye and the sixth sense, basically. Yeah. But in the morning sun and in the evening sun, if you if you capture it coming up or if you capture it going down, the, the light is not as harsh on you. And right. so if you can stare at the sun for an extended period of time, you know, 10, 20 minutes, see if you learn something from it, because essentially it's like a portal feeding us information. And that's uh, why a lot of people. Uh, all these religions are tied to the sun and, right. you know, so, but yeah, I've found it to be pretty awakening in my research. So yeah, yeah, for sure. Definitely. I mean, it's, it's very interesting to learn about it. Like I didn't know what you said. So it's yeah. like, yeah, that's great. And it's like, you know, also the moon, like in, in, in Islam, we follow lunar hero calendar. So yeah. we follow the moon calendar. We don't follow the, you know, the normal calendar. Like in Islamic countries, if in Gulf, if you'll go, it's like the holidays are on Friday because that's basically, the, that's the most important day of the week in Islam because so many things happen on Friday. Like one of Prophet Nu, he came out of the fish's mouth on that day and so many other things also basically happened basically on Friday. I don't, I don't remember all the events, but I know most of the events like the Prophet Abraham, Basically, you know, when he was asked, I guess, to, you know, sacrifice his son, that was also Friday. I am yeah. not sure about it because, you know, in, in in Islam, if we are not sure about something, we don't have to say that we are sure about it. Otherwise, we get sin. Yeah. <laughs> so I don't. I don't like sure. to say I'm sure about a lot of things either. <laughs> right. For sure. For sure. That's important. Um, I don't know how people can be so sure all the time. Sure. <laughs> um, so. Uh, we're kind of wrapping up here. You've mentioned you've got some books. Maybe we could talk a little bit about them. Sure. Um, you know, and and if you ever write another book, what would it be about? Yeah, sure. Basically, you know, I I really planned this year that every six months I launch a book. Cool. So basically, this one basically is like focused on personal development and entrepreneurship. My next one is more based on philosophy and that yeah. books. That book is also super amazing. I'm very excited for that one as well. Like I have planned all the things for them for my next three books. And, you know, basically I'll keep you posted on whenever they come. But yeah. this one is out. This one is Lessons from a Millionaire. This one is like so amazing. You will love it. There's a sample available as well on the website. Go on yasinhashma.com. Go on book section. You can go there and read the book. You can read the sample. If you like the sample, you go basically, you know, buy the book. It's a very amazing book. And you, there's also an offer discount for this month. It's basically 10 to 15% off for this month. And there's also a referral bonus if someone will refer the book to another person. And also, basically, it's an ebook and there's a paperback, it's not there internationally. So basically, the ebook is there internationally. And I'm basically, you know, currently I was focused on my fund and my company and also basically some things in my wealth management, but I'm now shifting my, because we recently, we launched the book yesterday. So it's like now I'm more focused on basically, you know, attending different shows and podcasts to basically, you know, right. share the word, share the word about basically, you know, the book. Like I've scheduled like 200 next shows and podcasts I've scheduled for the next basically, you know, 365 days. So I'm 
thinking of basically you know sharing that as well and also cross sharing my audience and growing the channel i'm also basically you know thinking of creating my youtube basically you know channel like my website on my all my media stuff which i'm doing i'm focused on creating it more in the form of like a tv channel dot yasinashmi.tv where i'm planning to do different shows bringing different entrepreneurs like different presidential candidates like one of our basically you know network members is also planning to run for us president election there are a lot of people basically you know basically a lot of people who have a net worth of more than 100 million people who are basically who have businesses that have hundreds of millions of dollars in revenue people who are governors of different states in ue or different other states so basically i plan to bring so many people in my network and i'm very excited for that one i'm also thinking of adding different creators and that's something which we can also collaborate on you know we can talk after sure. this really meeting like you know i'm thinking of creating it more of like a platform where we can have you know similar minded people we can cross your audience and have all the people together at one platform so basically it's it's basically in the plan and i'm currently thinking about you know how i'm it's currently on ideation stage how i'm planning to create that tv channel yeah 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 uh people that are high achievers man we we have all these different things in our minds and we have to schedule all these different things and it's uh Sure. It's a lot for others to keep up with, but I'm, sure. <laughs> I'm I'm hearing what you're saying and I'm keeping up with it, you know. So, Perfect. Um, I'm and on the I, same. I, and, and Tim, I'm very sorry because I guess we re we rescheduled this podcast fourth time. I guess I'm sorry yeah. about that. <laughs> it's quite all right. We're wrapping up here uh, now. What is the best way for the audience to support your mission? Get in contact. Do you want to drop sure. some of your website? You know, names? Yeah, sure. So basically. Anyone who want to get in touch with our team, you can just go on yasirashmi.com. Okay, someone from our team will contact you. Or basically, you know, if needed, I'll I'll be, I'll try to basically you know talk to you if needed. And it's like you can go and see all my stuff. You can go on my YouTube channel, search Yasir Hashmi on YouTube. You will find all my videos, and you go you can find all my podcasts on Spotify and Apple Podcasts and all the things which I have told or shared on my podcast. Anything which I tell on my podcast is just. Most of the time, it's just in under one minute, or most of the time, a maximum it's five minutes. Okay, and it's just precise information. Okay, I my my focus is never to give anyone advice. My focus is to just throw out data points which you apply according to the context of your life because context and intensity are superior than data points. Like if I tell you something and you just apply in the wrong context, you will that's wrong. Like a uh, wrong advice at right time. Is the wrong advice or let's say our right advice at wrong time is wrong advice so that's how it is so it's important to you know understand the context before you know just throwing or applying something and we can only understand what we can understand at that time sure. and sometimes you have to right. learn things in layers right. and, and that's what right. uh, that's what this is all about sure. now uh i hate this part uh but that concludes the episode and thank you for joining us uh it was a pleasure uh, getting Perfect. some of your insights and knowledge. Perfect. Likewise, Tim. Thank you so much and have a great day. Yes, sir. All right. Let's wrap this up and ciao. <laughs>